Hi, welcome to Sneedon Works. On this one, I'm gonna build a better reservoir tank for the supercharger, like the intercooler system. I don't really like the one that I have in there now. It looks very, well, here, look, look at this right here. Very off the shelf, very Amazon cheap. But I think I can build one that makes it look a little bit more custom and kind of fit the area a little bit better, kind of clean it up. And that's kind of my goal for this, just to make things look better. Plus, it's just a fun project. I enjoy TIG welding some aluminum. Always use the practice. So let me show you what I got going on here, and then we can build it from there. Material-wise, 4-inch aluminum tube. Uh, I use this for all my intake stuff, but it's just a leftover scrap piece. Got a weld-in aluminum cap. Got an Amazon. I think these are like 15 bucks. 12 AN bungs that I need for the inlet and the outlet. An eighth inch plate, aluminum there for my caps, top and bottom. And then in order to make the brackets to mount it up, I've got some angle aluminum here, uh, one inch, eighth inch thick. I think it's gonna work out nice with the plan in my head. Um, first thing, I'm gonna get the old tank out after taking some measurements, because I think I gotta shorten this guy up a little bit. You gotta cut circles out for the cap tops mark out where these go and then just weld everything together and then it should be just you know hunky dory let's get to it so far i've made a huge mess down in there i got it out though and whoever built this car me idiot loctited if that's a word loctited loctite lock i put loctite on the bolts that hold it in so it was a huge pain in the butt and i was swearing at myself the whole time idiot but out um yeah this is just ugly to me now it looked kind of cool when i first did it but i don't know these these tubes i guess i don't really trust them uh that could easily like come apart and it was kind of leaking already from some of the seals there's just so many ports on this dang thing it just doesn't make any sense so simplifying it again this tube but i want to make it kind of swirl right so i see every once in a while somebody takes a tube like this puts it on one end and then it i don't know how to describe it but the tube just kind of goes in on one side so that it gives like a swirling effect when it comes back in i think that's what i want to do i want to try to cut this guy out because it fits perfectly on the bung there i think that's going to be pretty slick so let me get to that let me make this piece out and then we can go from there um, I've got my tops made, top, top, and bottom here. Fitting pretty good. I just used a skill saw to cut that out with a little WD-40, go really slow with a fine-toothed bit, and it will jump around on you a lot. I can tell you that right now. But that should be good enough to weld. Sweet. Okay, let's make this. Got this section looking pretty good. It's pretty flush all the way around, except for the end there. Probably have to beat that down when I weld it in. And that's what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and weld this guy in just to find out that it's in the way of something else, which is going to be great. And then I'm going to weld the bung in on the end of there just to get this section of it done. Sweet. You should definitely never weld if you're not in the mood to do so. I'm fighting a headache right now, and it just it didn't didn't go my way. Like I'm, I don't know a lot about welding. I'm complete amateur when it comes to welding, but I do do it myself and I do like to learn and, and learn from my mistakes. And I think my mistake was that I was pulling, see that I was starting again with that on there. And after I started snipping that off, it went a lot easier. What I'm talking about is, well, it didn't, it got very like contaminated and I think I was cooking it at the same time and then I was getting frustrated. I should have just stopped. Should have just stopped and backed off. As you can see, I took a grinder to it, right? And just kind of smoothed it all out. It did go good, like up in here and where the bung is and stuff like that, after I learned from my mistake down here. But man, like, I, I don't know. It's frustrating when it doesn't go your way. But at the same time, it's like, what can you take away from it? Um, I'm taking away from it that I should quit tonight because it is late. And like I said, I am fighting a headache and I just don't. I don't feel the motivation to get 
it done. It's not fun right now. And I don't like it when it's not fun. When it's not fun, you don't make good progress. So uh, I'm going to pick this back up tomorrow and yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll go better, but that's, it's a good start. I mean, I've got, I've got the gist of the look that I'm going for and, and the functionality of it all, and it should work out just fine, but yeah, it's okay. It's a good life. I'm back at it. You know what the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And that's what I was doing. And I was like, you know, you need to stop. You need to figure out why it was going bad. Uh, it turns out my tungsten, the way I sharpened it, uh, I usually just use a cutoff wheel and then stick a tungsten into a drill bit or a, uh, um, a drill, chuck it in there, and I'll spin that while I have uh, the grinder just going to town. And I see that shiny stuff right there. Don't do that. I think that was my problem. I don't think I was getting the arc concentrated on the area that I wanted to. It was spreading out far enough that it was overheating basically the material. And it was outside of the gas shielding zone, which was contaminating the weld right away. So I went ahead and I switched over to like a bigger Hoopa cup. And then I tried to find, I like to use green tungsten when I go ahead and weld aluminum. I think it works actually really well. I'm not a professional by any means, but I found that the green is the best for it. Um, I found one that I didn't grind st stupidly. Stupid, stupidly? See, that's how dumb I am. I can't even stupid, stupid. Lee. I just felt so stupid, to be honest with you. Uh, but I did switch that over, and these are the results right here. It's still pretty hot. But that's much better. I can control the heat zone. See this? This is all, where all the contaminated area was. I just kind of ground it down. Like I said, this is going to get all wrinkle black painted. But that looks way better than it did. That was it was terrible. It was so bad. Whatever. Got it fixed. Got it straightened out. Plus, no one will ever see that area anyway. The top though, look, top looks amazing. So that's cool. Now I got to figure out how to put on. What was the top? Is over here. So the top you can get these on Amazon. I think I said that before, but I, I don't know where I left off. Weld on top. Screw cap. This guy's gonna go, you know, right in here somewhere. So we gotta cut a hole for this, and I also need to cut a hole in the bottom for the bung, for the feed, I guess, for the pump. So that's what I'm gonna work on now, figure out where these guys gotta go, and then I gotta figure out how it's gonna like weld up to the mount that I have mounted in the car. Get to it. Went ahead, welded it to the bracket that holds it. So this is a piece of angle aluminum uh, that I had to set up very carefully in order to make sure that it stayed like straight and lined up. So now I can kind of see where this cap's got to go. So I have zero interference with anything else. Looking right there is pretty good. And I can also mark out where the other, the feed bung goes or the drain bug, bung, drain bung. Can I say that correctly? There we go. On the bottom side, the way I can cut these two out and do these at the same time. I'm running really low. On Argon. I'm really hoping to get this project done with as much as what's in there. But I guess we're going to find out. But yeah, I'm going to mark these out, cut these out, and then we'll just we'll weld them up.
if you notice that weird gap in the time lapse, it's because it's been a couple of days. Uh, I ran out of argon in the welder, so I had to go pick some of that up today. And then in between that time, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I had a man cold. And if anybody knows anything about a man cold, they are the worst. I died. I almost died. You know, that's how bad it was. Not really. But I am, I don't know, I just didn't feel like coming out here and working on stuff just because you're so, like, stuffed up. Your face hurts. You all know what it's about. Anyway, look, this is all welded up now. Check it out. And it doesn't look terrible. Three sixty view. This is really hot yet. I still, um, I picked up some more tungsten, some green tungsten. And I don't know what's up with this stuff, but as soon as I put a little bit too much heat to it, the tip of it is hot. No, can you see that? It balled up like right away, which actually didn't hurt it at all. It actually welded pretty good like that. I don't know why I did that, because the other green stuff that I have doesn't do that. So I don't, I'll have to look into that, or if you know anything about that, let me know in the comments. Because, like I said, I am a complete amateur welder, and I honestly probably shouldn't even be welding on anything that holds fluids or strength. But that's what I'm doing. Um, this is done now. I got to test it for leaks, which I don't think I should have any, because I don't see any pinholes. Oh, and another thing. If you're like me and you don't like the way that your welds kind of came out, just go over them again. Like just kind of hold it there and then you can like play with the pedal and then get your dime stack just right. And it actually comes out pretty good. Like I did on the bottom, I'd show you guys, but that's hot. I'm not going to touch it. Maybe I'll insert a little video right here. And it, it actually comes out really good. I mean, you're wasting argon, but in the end, it just looks better. And I'm sure pro welders are going to be like, that's just a cheater way of doing it and you're piece of crap but who cares nobody cares like i said this is really hot i'm gonna let this cool down i'm gonna scuff this guy up and paint it here in a minute but i also have um uh a coolant reservoir tank a new one that i want to put in to eliminate the other side that matched this side does that make sense here i'll show you so this guy right here i've had this thing kicking around for quite a while stainless steel um they're pretty nice you know, but I want to mount it. Let me scratch my car up here. Down in there, off of um, the AC part thing right there. It's got some holes in there. I just got to make a couple of L brackets for that to bolt to, and then this to bolt to that, and eliminate this guy right here, and eliminate not eliminate the horn, but I want to move it because eventually, probably next up, I want to put the air filter right in this area right here. I think that'd be kind of slick. So. Let me get to removing all of this stuff. Let's make some L brackets and we bolt this up. I have a slight issue with this bracket here that used to hold on the old tank. It's completely in my way uh, for not only the tank that goes right here, but also the cold air intake that I want to plan on building here in the future because the filter is going to live kind of in this area here. So this guy's got to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off with a death wheel and try to clean it up as best as I can. I'm covering up everything, and then um, hopefully I can make these cuts clean and not hit anything else. Got the coolant overflow tank installed. Very straightforward, actually. Um, just bolted it right to the AC unit there. And this is where I had to cut that bracket off. Went ahead and painted that up. Looks nice and pretty now. Now I got plenty of room for the future cold air intake. And then over here on the tank side, this thing's nice and dry now. But I went ahead and put some threaded inserts in where it did bolt up. So if you guys don't have one of these tools, definitely pick one up. There's so many uses for these things. I absolutely love it, but now I can go ahead, I can install this and we can check out how it looks. Typical, I forgot to film like an outro or show you the, the final result. It's been like a week, to be honest with you, but it is installed and I've been actually driving the car 
a lot lately and it's working well. I just want to make sure I didn't have any leaks or anything like that. But let's turn it on and then I can show you guys it in action. Doing its swirl, swirliness that I was kind of going for. Come on, there we go, okay. There you go. So I just used a 50-50 mix of antifreeze in that guy. Uh, seems to work well. I don't, I mean, I beat on this car. Don't get me wrong, but my air temperatures don't go all that high at all. Like nothing that I should even be remotely concerned about. So I think a tank like this is perfect for just a street driven car that is just, you know, a fun cruiser. Um, I see a lot of guys use ice box and things like that. And I think that's kind of overkill, especially if you watch like engine masters. And they, I think they did that test that one time uh, to see if it actually created horsepower in it. It didn't. So uh, I think those things are overkill. And I think this thing is pretty much perfect. So I like it a lot. Goal has been met. If you guys made it this far in the video, hit that like, hit the subscribe, get a lot more coming up. Uh, Power Tour, it's about, about a month away. It's like 30 days away from right now that I gotta leave. So that's pretty cool. Taking this guy, um, I know that this thing's sorted and that it's reliable. I have way too many things to do with the Malibu in order to make that thing there. Maybe next year, we'll see. Um, but I am working on the Malibu. I have been, I, I, obviously I moved it to where it's at right now. And I'm just doing weather stripping and things like that, which is actually a pain in the butt on a G-Body. Uh, nothing exciting, so I'm not really filming it. But when I do get parts in for it, I will film it. But I also have to prep this guy for Power Tour, and I think that's what's going to be the next one. Um, just kind of go over everything and hopefully get your guys' input on um, if you're going to go or not. So... Uh, I plan on doing the whole thing, and it's going to be fun. It's kind of local to me, kind of not. It's, you know, closer than it was last year, so I'm pretty excited for it. But yeah, if you guys made it again, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.